Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a new timeline and kind of uh, some of the complications that are involved with uh, with creating a new timeline here. Uh, first of all, one thing I want to state is that if you are creating a new timeline, one thing you can simply do is obviously just grab a clip and it says drag media here to create sequence. We're going to go a little bit beyond that because you've got to kind of understand what's happening here, especially if you're mixing uh, different formats and frame rates of, uh, of footage. I've got three different folders here. I'm going to go under assembly mode so we can see a little bit more area here. So it uh, shares the source window with the program window here. So I'm going to double click on one of these folders here and it will open it up in a separate tab. And uh, let's put this into icon mode. And uh, when I select the clip here, it's going to show up in this window, up, up, up in this area here. It's called the preview area. Some specific attributes about these clips down here. And this one, if I select this video clip, it shows that it's 1920 by 1080 resolution uh, and the frame rate is 23.976. All the clips I have here are pretty much 24 frames per second. But keep in mind, whatever settings you have here, it's important to, have, to match those settings to your timeline, kind of know what you're doing there. If your preview area is not showing, click on this little menu drop down and then go down to your preview area and then it will show that area. Uh, otherwise, if that's turned off, that doesn't show that it doesn't show that information. So let's go to a different folder here. I'm going to double click on this one right here and uh, let's go to icon mode. And I'm going to select on one of these clips here and notice that, that all the clips in, in this uh, folder are 4K. These are 4096 by 2160. And then in the third one, these clips here are 3840 by 2160. So these are basically UHD. Uh, these ones are uh, are true 4K, and this one is 1920 by 1080. So one thing you got to be careful of when you're creating a new timeline is if you're going to be mixing formats, if you're going to be mixing resolutions, you got to decide what your delivery format will be in the end. So let's say we're editing a commercial that's going to be going to 1920 by 1080 for broadcast. So that's going to be our our end format. So we've looked at all of our frame rates. Our frame rates are the same, so we don't have to deal with that. If you're dealing with a frame rate that's like 30 frames per second, and you have some footage that's 24 frames per second, you usually want to go with the 30 frame per second because it's it's easy for Premiere to conform that footage to duplicate frames. Uh, this is a topic for another episode, but uh, typically speaking, going from it's easier to duplicate frames than it is to remove frames. Just keep that in mind. So if you're going from 30 frames to 24, you're going to have some skipping on your footage because it will be removing a, a frame unless you're doing some sort of frame blending, which is a topic for another day. So let's say all these are 24 frames per second, 23.976. We're going to, uh, let's say the, the delivery format is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to grab this um, clip here. I'm going to drag it down and drop it into the timeline. Once we drop it there, it has created a timeline. You can see this little icon right there. That means that this is a sequence or a timeline. Uh, what I like to do is that it's in my uh, Moab folder right now. I'm going to go to my awesome stuff project. I'm going to arrow down. I'm going to grab this timeline and I'm going to drag it out of the folder. You can drag it down or you can drag it to the left and that little no symbol comes off. And the timeline is now outside of the, the folder, uh, but it's got the same name as the clip. So I'm going to select that, hit enter, and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this Moab timeline. Click away from that. Now it's named. I don't need this clip in there anymore because I've now created that sequence. So I'm going to select this and delete it. And now I've got a sequence to work out of. Now, one thing that you got to be careful of is if we're going to be mixing 4K footage and UHD footage in this timeline, you want it to downscale it so you're seeing your entire image. Uh, since these are, are larger, uh, you've got to go under Edit, Preferences, and Media. And under media, you have this option right here. Right now, I have this on default media scaling. I've got a ep separate episode on this earlier in the in this in this playlist. So if you want to look at that, go back and look at it. But I had scale to frame size selected on the media that I'm importing. Uh, so, so whenever I import footage, it's going to check mark it with this scale to frame size. If I don't have this selected, let's show you what happens. I'm going to grab some footage. These ones I do, and I can tell this is selected, or this has that check marked on it because I go up to clip, go to video options, and I can see that it's got that attributes check mark. So that, what that means is if I drop this in a smaller resolution timeline, it's going to scale down. It's, first of all, there's no clip in it, so it's asking me, do you want to change the settings to this timeline or keep existing settings? I'm going to say keep existing settings. And notice it scales this 4K footage, this 4K footage down. And this is actually a wider aspect ratio, so it actually letterboxes it because it's squeezing that. If I double click on this, you can see the wireframe around the video. It squeezes it to fit into a different aspect ratio. But it did scale this down to fit into the, my, my timeline. If that is not checkmarked, let's just show you what happens. I'm going to select this, go up to clip. Go to video options and uncheck scale to frame size for that one for that one video clip. I drag that and drop it into the timeline. Keep existing settings and look what it's done. It's zoomed up on it. It's basically cropping it out just so it has 1920 by 1080 uh, pixels in here rather than the 4K, rather than the uh, 4,000 pixels 
rather than the 4096 by 2160 pixels. Uh, so it scaled it up to, to it was basically zoomed up and just using that amount of, of pixels. So if you're zooming up on your image like that, what you've got to do is you can select all the clips that you, if you didn't have that uh, selected when you in the in the preferences when you imported it, you can select the footage if like all these here need to be changed. I can go up to clip, go to video options and check mark this. So they are, most of these are check marks, so I'm going to uncheck them and then recheck them so that it selects all of them. Now they all have that attribute added. Yep, that one has been added. So now when I drop those in, they're going to scale to meet this requirement. Now let's say we want to work in a different timeline. Let's say we've got two different timelines in this project. We've got one for the Moab, which is 1920 by 1080, one for this Dash commercial, uh, and we want to create a new timeline for just for this rather than share a timeline. So now that that thing is gone, it says drag to create sequence. Another way you can create a sequence is you can grab the clip that you want and you drag down to this little dog ear document thingy right here. This is the new item icon and you let go. And that just generated a new timeline. Here's my Moab timeline, and here's the new timeline. And now this timeline is based off the settings of the clip that I dragged into it. So I'm going to grab that one, drag it out, and I'm going to call this one dash commercial timeline. And I've got these two timelines. I can delete that clip out of here. And once again, if, if you have no clips in here and you try to drag a, a, a clip that has different attributes in it, this is what it does. It asks you, do you want to change the sequence or do you want to keep the existing settings? If I change the sequence, it'll change it to meet uh, the size and resolution and frame rate of this clip here and not the previous one. So if you do keep existing setting, now it actually blows my video up. That actually uh, blows that video up because this footage is actually 1920 by 1080. So it blew, uh, blew this up to fit the resolution of this uh, of this timeline. This is a different aspect ratio. This is 16 by 9. And this other one was 1.85 to 1 uh, aspect ratio. So this pillar boxes uh, your image to fit it into the, into the image because it's a different aspect ratio. So it just zooms it up until it fits the constraints of this and then leaves it uh, pillar boxed on the end. But if you already have a clip in this timeline that meets the uh, that matches the attributes, and then you grab one that has different attributes, like the 1920 by 1080, and you edit that into this timeline here, it doesn't ask you that question because it already has some footage in here. So that's locked to that to those settings. Now when you drop new footage, you know it's not going to ask you that question. If you want to uh, change your timeline to meet the settings of the new clip, it'll only do that when your timeline is empty and you put a clip in that is a different uh, that has different attributes. And there it is asking. And I can change it to meet to, to those settings, or I can keep the existing settings and it will zoom to fit. So let's create a third timeline based on the third settings here of our UHD file here. I'm going to drag that down once again, hover over this, let go. It names it. I'm going to select the clip out of it. I don't need that in there anymore. Delete it. This has been named now. And I'm going to drag this out, drop it, and rename it. Now I've got these three timelines with three different settings. You can select them and see the different settings as I talk, as I move through these. And I've got all three of these open. If you want to close one of these, you can simply select here. You can select the one that you want and hit Control W. We'll close a Control W. W is almost like think about it as closing a window. So Control W closes that window or that tab. Uh, and now if you want to bring those back, you can simply move over here and double click on them and and open them up again. Because sometimes people will unintentionally uh, close their timeline. If you hit on the X and close all these and they're all gone and now you're wondering where your timeline is, you can just move back to your project window, double click on them, and they open back up. So if you, have, if you accidentally close those, just go double click on them and they will open back up. And the last thing here, if you want to also generate uh, a custom sequence, you can go down to this new item icon and do a new sequence. And you can generate your own timeline. They have a bunch of presets in here you can select for different cameras. Um, or you can do custom resolutions by selecting one of these and going up to setting and changing resolution to your, fit your custom frame, custom frame rates and make your own timeline based on your own settings. Now, I rarely do this because usually I have a clip that will, is going to be my end delivery format, so I will drag those clips. If you have a, a certain settings that you need to meet, uh, you can go in and set these up manually. Hit OK and name your sequence, or just call this custom, custom timeline, and hit OK, and it generates that timeline with my custom settings. Well, that's a quick overview on how to generate timelines and how to and how to have several of them open up at the same time. Actually, in the next episode, we're going to finally start getting into uh, editing technique and teaching you guys how to edit.